Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a private Azure storage container and upload the files with .NET Core Web API. And I will also show you how to access those files using this shared access signature. They are called as SAS tokens. Come, let's dive in. I have opened the Azure portal and I have logged in and you can see all of these are my resources. So let's go to all resource and I can already see a couple of uh, storage container, but let's create a quick uh, container from the starting. So go click on storage container in the search box. You will be presented with an option. Click on the container and here you just need to fill up your basic information like subscription, this resource group, you know, a unique storage name. Storage name cannot have a hyphen or anything. It all has to be a small letter. Okay. All right, so we have provided a storage account and then we choose a standard one and the locally run and see and all of these options I'm going to leave it as default. Uh, they're all configured to work uh, for a default procedures. So I'm going to choose everything as default. Let's go one by one network and then networking. So it's going to be enabled for the public access and uh, all these settings. I'm going to leave it as default encryption. Let Microsoft manage MMK. And then let's uh, leave the tag and then go to review. Everything looks good. Click on create. So the storage container storage uh, account has been created. Now to create a container, go to the container and here um, you can create the container, but let's go and take a look at the access keys, right? So the connection strings and the keys are coming from the access keys, which is under the security and networking, but let's concentrate on the container. I'm going to choose first one as the private. So no anonymous access, which means the blobs which are inside this container are not allowed to access by default. Okay. You need to have something called token or SAS token. So let's create this container. I name it as demo protected. I will create another public container, which is anonymous access. I will choose this access level as blob anonymous access, which means container and everything inside this container is, is publicly available. So any assets that you wanted to put it in your website, generally it goes in publicly as accessible one. So the other one is a demo public. So we have two containers, right? So what am I going to do is I'm going to show you what is the difference between these two containers with terms of the access level. So I am currently in the demo public so uh, i go and click on upload i'm going to choose a profile picture of the website and then i upload it in order to access the file click on the file go to this url i copied it i'm going to paste this and once you paste it it opens up right because this container is publicly accessible it's we are allowing it as anonymous access now what happens if you do the same thing in the demo protected container i'm going to choose the same file upload click on the file take the url go open up that url it shows 404 it doesn't even show you don't have access it just says it doesn't exist that's good so this is protected one right so you cannot just access this file no one can access this file unless someone has something called shared access token sas so once you click on this sas another setting you can choose all these options like start date, end date, when ha when it has to expire, what kind of permission. For us, we are just reading it, so the read permission is sufficient. But basically, as and when you choose and click on this generate SAS token, there will be parameters uh, appended to this token. And this token will have parameters. Right now, it just has the date and then the read access as R. But based on what you choose, it comes. So go to the file which we cannot open and put a question mark and append this signature, right? Once you append the signature, it has a key and it knows this key is not expired for one hour. So it opens up. Great. Now let's, uh, we know how this works. Now let's go to our project, go to the storage controller. We already have a endpoint. And what we are going to do is we're going to show you how to upload any file to this container. So the container name, I'm hard coding this for now as the demo protected, but this can be configurable. All right. So once we do this, what we're going to do, we're going to install some packages, uh, the Azure storage blob packages. I'll show you shortly. And then these, uh, the container name, either you can give demo protected or demo public based on what you have given. This is for demo purpose. So I have these two containers. So I named it like that. Okay. So basically what it does is once it uploads a file, it takes the details and store it in a table called customer contacts upload. Okay. So through this upload system, basically I'm going to upload only the Excel file. I'll show you the Excel file now. Okay. 
So this Excel file will have a couple of columns and then I wanted to store this Excel file as and when uh, you know someone uploads the contract in my website and then later I'm going to process it. In the upcoming video you will see how uploading such a file triggers a blob trigger in the Azure function. Okay. Now let's focus on this. Right now the file path is coming as the uh, the storage container, I mean the storage account name and then followed by the website. So now let's go to the overview. Okay, so the account name, the storage account name is Azure AZ204 storage demo. Okay, that's the account name. You can you can literally see in the top. So we're gonna copy that and the rest of the URL is, is always same for all the storage container under the Microsoft Azure. So let's copy this, I copy it, go back. And I'm gonna just need put this one as the starting of the subdomain. This comes under blob.core.windows.net followed by our container name slash the blob name okay the blob name that that uh, we are going to store it now the next one is the connection string so from where this connection string is coming uh, so before that like i said you need to install azure.storage.blobs uh, that's the package that we need to install don't worry about this coding you will get this from the github repository but this azure storage is the connection string of the azure uh, storage account so from where this connection setting is coming okay so it's in the uh, app settings dot development dot json but this azure storage connection is coming from here go to the portal under the security and networking under the access key like i showed you initially right so there's something called connection string so if you go to access key and click on show and copy this you can literally copy and paste it here but when you do this in the real world right so these connection string will stay in the configuration of the deployed app itself it doesn't come here but this is for demo purpose for understanding this is how the connection strings are taken now everything looks good we're going to run this application and show you how this upload works and goes and sits there now this is the endpoint click on try it out i'm going to choose the same uh, you know uh, the contact uh, dot xlx so it is coming here it is going to go through each of this file so it will convert this into steam and then copy that steam and then it generates a file name and this is the final path that we want okay and this path will match the path that i'm going to show you on the uploaded file so once you're done with that it's going to save so let's Let's save it. It's saved. That's it. So it's in the database as well. Okay. Now uh, you can upload many things. Let's go to the container and see whether it's got uploaded. You can see this is the file that we uploaded and it's there. And this URL, if you try to open, obviously it won't open, right? So because it doesn't have the SA signature. But if you copy the signature that we already have it, and if you paste that signature, like take it from the question mark, that's the query string take it there and put it at the end of this file and this will download the file you can see the file got downloaded which means the resource is accessible okay now with the right permission you can do these protection of your files so that no one can download it and later you can process uh, uh, in many way and if you do it in a demo public uh, container then you don't need this SAS signature token sad access signature is not required because that's a public one all right i hope you enjoyed this video you learned how to do this uh, to deal with your dotnet core and the storage account and upload the files and protect the files i thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon